Good morning, Alicia. Thank Hi, you. For, thanks for coming along this morning. Okay, the purpose of today is for you to overtake the outstanding summative assessment, which meets the assessment criteria for outcomes one, two, and three. Uh, regarding explaining how learning, teaching and assessment and resources met the learner's needs and also your own personal reflection and how you felt the, uh, you, you performed uh, delivering the sessions. Mm -hmm. Is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. The first uh, question, how did your learning and teaching meet the needs of your, your students? Well, it's quite a diverse group, so I made sure that we had lots of different activities, lots of practical hands-on activities, but also anything that I was seeing at the start of a lesson, um, they would have it written down because I've also got a student with a hearing impairment and I would also talk through that as well. So there were different ways that they could access the information about where the class was going. I also let the students know in advance of the class what we're going to do at the end of the last lesson. And I sometimes use the VLE to prompt them in case they need to bring anything. So um, I tried to kind of work with all the different learning styles. I've done some VARC questionnaires with some of the students. So this class tend to be mostly kinesthetic learners. So they like doing practical hands-on things. They don't like to sit and have a lecture necessarily. So I make sure we kind of change the pace all the time and try. Mm -hmm. How do you ascertain if you're meeting all their, their needs? Um, well, I use diagnostic assessment all the time. So I mm -hmm. constantly ask them questions, but also formative assessment so that that's a good way of ascertaining but I also when I do a lecturer led demonstration I then ask for volunteers from the group so then the students will do some of the demonstration with me as well and then I can see immediately whether whether they're understanding or not I also provide them with handouts which they can print out in advance and I bring in lots of books and things that they can they can look at an example sorry I should have said I bring in examples of previous students work so um this is an example here. Well, this is an example by this class, actually. But this is what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be doing a professionally mounted mm -hmm. photograph, a black and white photograph that they have printed to an exhibition quality standard. So then. Yeah, excellent. OK, that's fine. And do, do your students provide you feedback at the end of the class on how it went? or They do. Well, they tend to provide it as it goes anyway. They're quite... We, we trust each other, so they're quite um, forward... If things, they don't understand things, they don't feel uncomfortable asking a question because I create a safe learning environment where they feel it's okay to ask. And I say to them, when I was a student, I was, I was the one that was asking all the questions all the time. So they don't think it's, a, it's an annoying thing for them to do. But also at the end of the class, I always summarise, you know, what have we learned today? What was, if you were to bump into someone in the corridor, what's the one thing you would tell them that you enjoyed about today or you learned? So we... We do that at the end and we also um, always think about how we're doing as a group and what we could do better next time and how they're doing as a student and what they can do better next time. So I make sure... Oh, that's excellent, actually, yeah. Ways. I think the safe work, the safe environment's really crucial in going forward. Again, mm -hmm. that's, again, going back to the sort of basic philosophy of curriculum for excellence, yep. creating that safe environment mm -hmm. uh, to enhance and sort of take forward learning. That's excellent. Thank Absolutely. you. Um, can you sort of... Tell me about some of the resources uh, that you used uh, to to meet the needs of your learners. Yeah, I mean, upstairs we're very lucky because we've got a dark room. We've got a traditional black and white photography dark room, which is an excellent resource. And it means that as photographers, they can learn about light and time. And we've also got the um, cutting and mounting facilities, which that are health and safety regards for all of these all of these facilities which the students are briefed on, they do their own health and safety checks with things with me as we go. I also, they love books. I always bring in photography books because it's nice to have a physical object. I think a lot of my students are what I would call digital natives. They've been born in a digital world, whereas we are digital immigrants. We've been, we've been brought up in an analog world where digital technology is quite new. But they tend to love the books. I also get them to download apps for their smartphones and their iPads and things, darkroom apps and printing mm. apps and, and those sorts of things, because some of them like to learn that way. I've got a Twitter account for the college as well that oh, we all set up with the PDA. So I'll set, I'll put up kind of old school photography links up on the Twitter mm -hmm. so then they can retweet that and like it and, mm -hmm. and share it. So I try lots of different things. And obviously we've got My City. I've neglected mm -hmm. My City as a resource. That's the college's Moodle VLE system. So I put I put more information up on there. Ah, uh -huh, excellent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well done. And how do you keep up to date with your sort of 
you, you, you're using a lot of technology there. Mm -hmm. to, again, do, do you sort of undertake professional development in technology to enhance? I do sometimes. Your? Yeah, yeah. I take opportunities when they're there, but I tend to um, I pick things up really quickly anyway, and I use the technology myself, so it's not such a such an alien thing to me. But I've gone on different types of mm. courses to. To That's learn great. how to use different things, and I'm I'm always trying to. I go to a lot of conferences mm -hmm. and things to try and update my my skills. That's great, and then your students are able to benefit from your expertise. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, how how do you ensure that the assessment meet the sort of various needs of of, of your learners? Um, well, we've got an alternative assessment procedure at the college if I need it, but. Again, I use peer-to-peer -peer feedback. I get the students to peer mark each other's work oh, before excellent. submission. So that's part of their formative assessment. It gets them ready for their summative. But it means that they are prepared. This is um, Race 2005 is, has championed this, but also Brookfield. With, I've mm -hmm. read Brookfield quite a lot. Um, I think that's a good way to get them kind of ready for their summative assessment, but also by having a checklist. Mm -hmm. They've got their, through their formative, make sure they've done all their formative. There are no surprises in their summative assessment then. So I think that's worked really, really well, getting them to, to peer assess. And it means it gives them, you know, they stand a bit taller because they feel like, you know, their, their opinion's as important in the classroom as anyone else's. It's not because I'm teaching them that there's a hierarchical thing going on. You know, we've all got something to add to the class. We've all got different experiences. So yeah, I try and use that as much as possible. Great, Alicia. So you're really ensuring that the learners are put mechanisms in place to make sure the learners can take their learning forward yeah. in a positive way. Uh -huh. Yeah, and to take, um, to take responsibility for their learning, I guess, as well, evaluating their own performance and just assessing if there are any gaps they can identify them but I find if they mark their own work it's usually five percent either side anyway so if they go five percent higher I'll give them oh, yeah. I'll give them extra marks mm -hmm. excellent and if it's lower or if it's too low I can I can then assert and if they need a confidence boost or we can work on their mm -hmm. work on their confidence that way as well mm -hmm. excellent from a personal perspective Alicia uh, can you explain um, how your you felt your own performance met the needs of your learners? Um, I think I, I'm self-aware of how my learners are getting on and things, so I adapt to I adapt to their moods and the dynamics in the group. So I think on, on this occasion, I performed well because we were in a safe environment. We mm -hmm. all trusted each other. Mm -hmm. It was a nice small group and they were all supporting each other as well. There was a lot of enthusiasm to do the kind of student-led demos after I'd done my mm -hmm. demos. Um, and it was interesting that you pointed out that I made eye contact with the students. I thought that that was a given that you, mm -hmm. <laughs> that you had to do that. Um, but I think overall the class went very well. Mm -hmm. It was it was a success. They understood what they had to do and the steps that they had to take mm -hmm. in order to achieve. So yep, on reflection, what would you do differently? I might. Um, from feedback from you as well, I might introduce a bit more new technology. But as I say, this was an analog class, so it may not have been so. Um, so relevant. We certainly use the smartphones a little bit. Um, I would have maybe asked to get a bit more privacy. We had quite a few interruptions in the class, which we managed to mm -hmm. to roll through, which was good. And I would also, when I was using the questioning in the circle, I might use a little bit more wait time. I think I've got a tendency to feel like time's going slower than it actually yeah. <laughs> than it actually is. So give a bit more wait time. I did notice that one girl was getting a bit shy and moving to the back. I should have possibly brought her in a bit more but again that's a sensitivity to she might not want to have wanted the spotlight so mm -hmm. excellent yeah that I think Brookfield talks about a seven second wait time yeah um, uh -huh. I've got to remind myself of that too mm -hmm. um, I should start counting it in my head mm -hmm. <laughs> okay so that's excellent thank you very much Alicia that's is there okay. anything thank else you, you want to add um I guess just thank you for for the PDA, it's been a good. It's been nice to find a language for all the things that I do already, mm -hmm. and kind of to to find resources that I can use, learning resources, and you know, if I'm ever looking for further training, I know mm -hmm. where to look for it now. So oh, great, it's good. Thanks very much. I think what I would like to reiterate is that it's evident that you, you engage well with your students, and again, we're talking about it's a curriculum for excellence. Really, at the core of that, it's about having being able to engage and and to encourage respect amongst mm -hmm. your students. Respect, and you definitely do have that in the eye contact, the safe environment. Um, mm -hmm. It was Thank absolutely you. evident. Um, 
you know, and I think absolutely you're going to have success going forward uh, because obviously you're a committed lifelong learner as well. So I hope you keep keep on learning and be, you know continue to sort of progress to TQFE. Thank so it's you. been a real pleasure working with you. Yes, you too. Thank Thanks you very, very much, much, Alicia. Thanks.